Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Introduction to Logic, Deductive and Inductive Reasoning. We are now at our fourth week, and for this uh, week four, our topic is about supposition, and we will define supposition and also differentiate material supposition from formal supposition. So let's proceed to our discussion. Supposition. Something that is supposed, an assumption made to account for known facts, conjecture. The act or an instance of supposing. Supposition synonyms, Wikisaurus supposition. S U P P O S I T I O N. What is the meaning of the word supposition as a noun? The cognitive process of supposing supposition. Supposition is the property of terms acquired from their use in the proposition. Again, proposition is an opinion or um, a thinking or an idea. And a term can stand as a material image, as a subject or predicate of a sentence, as something pertaining a reality, or as pertaining to something or someone in reality. So consider, let's consider these examples that we have. So examples that we have here are the subject or the object chair. Chair has five letters. Chair is an absolute concept. Chair is a furniture and chair is used to block the pathway. So these are some of the examples that we have. So for the first example in example number one, Chair stands as a material image for the word itself, chair, because chair has five letters. So the word itself stands as a material image. In example number two, chair, the object chair, stands for an essence or whatness that exists only in the mind. That is because the whatness of chair in this example cannot be absolute concept except only in the mind so for example number two it only exists in the mind for example number g the object chair or subject chair stands for its real essence or whatness because it tells us what the chair really is and chair really is a furniture it must be noted that in this example the supposition of chair does not actually imply an actual existence of a chair and in example number four, a chair is used to block the pathway. However, the chair stands for an actually existing chair. So the chair is already existing and it is used to block a pathway. So yet in all four examples, chair has exactly the same meaning, signification, and definition. That is, the examples do not indicate equivocal meanings of the term chair. So there are shift, shift in supposition of terms in reasoning and, then, and it will lead us into error. Thus, to avoid this kind of error, it is important to be able to identify the supposition of a particular term in a particular statement. So let's consider this um, statement. Philosophy means love of wisdom. Existentialism is a philosophy. Hence, existentialism means love of wisdom. So for this statement, it is considered an invalid argument because if one who does not know about anything about supposition will readily claim that this argument is valid. However, deeper analysis will show you that this argument is valid. Why? Because we will explain why this is so after we discuss the kinds of supposition. So again, supposition is the property of terms apart from their use in the proposition. So that is supposition. So there are kinds, there are two kinds of supposition. We have the material supposition and formal supposition. For material supposition, it is the use of term 
the spoken or written sign itself, but not for what it signifies. In the following examples that we had earlier about the object or the subject chair, the supposition of chair is material. So also chair rhymes with hair and chair has R as its last letter. In these usages, chair is really a furniture, but the fact that chairs being a furniture has nothing to do with the fact chair rhymes with hair or that its last letter is R. Hence, in these examples, we can only consider the material makeup of the word chair. So for material supposition, it is the use of a term for the spoken or written sign itself, but not for what it signifies. So let's have an example. A ruler is 12 inch long. So a ruler, the standard, I mean the standard measurement of a ruler is usually 12 inch long or one foot. And then another example that we have is President P. D. Gong is a ruler. So therefore, President Digong is 12 inch long. So as you can see, for material supposition, um, we are using this particular term as the written sign itself, but not for what it signifies. So basically, we are talking about the ruler that is used for measurement here. But if we are going to use the ruler in the word for President P. Digong, ruler means leader so therefore president digong is a leader but not 12 inch long but since we are using but since material supposition is the term used for a term spoken or written sign itself but not for what it signifies so again ruler has different meanings it could be the use yeah the tool that we use for measurement or also ruler can also signify as a leader. So there's a confusing um, meaning in the ruler that we have because we also mentioned President P. Digong. So therefore, this ruler is a material supposition because um, we are using the ruler for measurement but not for what it signifies on the other sentence. So we have here the formal supposition and it is one kind of supposition also. So we have here, formal supposition is the use of term not for the sign itself, but what for what it signifies. So it is the opposite of material supposition. So therefore, if we are going to use the example that we have for President Tigong, so President Tigong is a leader because he was, he is our ruler today. So let's use another example, the object chair that we had used. So chair is a furniture. Chair has a formal supposition because it is not the word chair that is a furniture, but what the chair signifies, that it is a furniture. So we all have here another example. All men are mortal, but Pedro is a man. Therefore, Pedro is mortal. So we all know that Pedro is a man and all men are mortal. So therefore, Pedro is really mortal so since we have discussed formal supposition we also have types of formal supposition for the formal supposition we have logical supposition and real supposition for logical supposition it is the use of a term for what it signifies not as it exists in real order but as it exists only in the mind so coming from the word logic or logical supposition. So there is a hint that it only exists on the mind of the person. So we have an example. So let's use the object again or the subject chair. And chair can signify as a concept, as a subject of a sentence, as inferior to the term furniture. But in all of these significations, chair does not refer to the chair in the real order, but to the chair that is a product of a mental construct. So we have examples, man is an absolute concept. So here, no elephants are pink. So elephant is the subject of the sentence. So this only exists in our mind. And monkey is inferior to the term Mama. So for logical supposition, take note that um, 
it is the use of term for what it signifies, not as it exists in the real order, but as it exists only in the mind of the person itself. So coming from the word, from, you can see logical supposition. So another type of formal supposition is the real supposition, and it is the use of a term for what it signifies in the real order. So for real order, it is the, the fact or the real um, meaning or term of for what it really signifies for the object. So the supposition, again, we're going to use chair, the object chair. The supposition of chair is real in the sentence. The chair is used to block the pathway because the chair is already existing and it refers to something in the real order that the chair is really used as to block the pathway. So here we have an example for uh, real supposition. We have man is a rational animal. Elephant is a mammal with long proboscis and the monkey is a primate. So these are some of the examples of real supposition. So real supposition is on one hand, so there are types of real supposition. It could be absolute or personal and also essential or accidental. So again, the types of formal supposition is logical and real supposition. Now we are going to discuss the types of real supposition. So for real supposition, we have absolute and personal and also essential and accidental. So let's discuss first absolute and personal. So a real supposition is absolute. If it is used to refer to the whatness or essence as such and not to something or someone that bears this whatness or essence. So um, this absolute uh, supposition refer to the whatness or essence, but not to um, this subject or particular object that has or it bears within. So, for example, in the sentence, man is rational. Man refers not to anyone, but to the essence of man as such. So, just the man itself, and it could be any man, and but the man itself is rational. So, we have here some examples. Elephant is a mama with long proboscis. So, chair is a furniture designed as a single seat, and kindness is the highest virtue. Also, um, so that is a real uh, absolute supposition. So for personal supposition, it is used to refer to the whatness or essence as such, but to something or someone that bears this whatness or essence. So particularly the subject or the object is bearing this whatness or essence, or it has this whatness or essence. So in the sentence, again, we're going to use the man is rational. So the man refers to someone who has the essence of man. Hence, it is personal. So again, um, so we are pertaining to the man, unlike in absolute, just man. So let's use the elephant I saw yesterday has a very long proboscis. So the elephant that you saw has a long proboscis, not short. A chair is used to block the pathway. These persons are innocent. So this is a personal supposition. So we have here. So it is very important to note that statements using terms with absolute supposition do not assert the actual existence of term signified objects. So for example, the sentence, Superman is a hero does not imply the existence of Superman in reality. This is not true, however, in statements using terms with personal supposition. So for example, again, the statement, Superman save Mary Jane, implies the existence of Superman in the actual order. So this is uh, the type of real supposition, absolute and personal. So again, 
Absolute and personal is like the opposite of each one another. Absolute is used to refer to the whatness or essence. And for personal, it refers or it does not refer to the whatness or essence, but to something or someone that bears or has this whatness or essence. So let's go to essential and accidental. So for essential and accidental, a real supposition is essential if the term is predicated of essential attributes. So attributes that make a thing or a substance what it is. So in the sentence, man is rational. Man has an essential supposition because rational is an essential attribute that makes a man. So it is an essential attribute to a particular thing or substance or an object or subject. So we have here the elephant is a mammal with long proboscis. Chair is a furniture. All men are mortal. So this is an essential attribute. And uh, so that is for essential. For accidental, a real supposition is accidental if the term is predicated of accidental attributes. So attributes that do not make a thing or substance what it is. So in the sentence, a man took his seat. So man has an accidental supposition because taking a seat is not what man makes a man as a man. We have your examples. Elephants can be used in circuses. So typically we see elephants in jungles, not in circuses. So it, it has been used in accidents supposition because animals or the elephant is not to be used in circuses. Also, the man has dirty face. So the man, if we see a man, it should not have a dirty face. So therefore, we are using this example in an accidental supposition because the man should have a clean face, not a dirty face. And another one is birds migrate from one continent to another. So for this statement, um, it generalizes birds and some birds do not migrate from one continent to another and some birds migrate. So Basically, this is an accidental supposition because um, that does not make a thing or substance what it is. So there is an accidental attribute for this one. So we have discussed the types of real supposition. Again, we have the absolute and personal and essential and accidental. So basically, absolute and personal is the opposite of one another and also essential and accidental. So they are the opposite of one another. So for this lesson, we have reference as introduction to logic, institutional module in logic from SIAC College, and also some suggested readings introduction to logic. And for your activity, I will require you to answer only activity one, which of these kinds of supposition are illustrated by men or men in each of the following propositions. So again, what are the kinds of supposition that we have? We have the absolute and personal and also essential and accidental. So let's um, try to answer this one, whether it is absolute, personal, essential, accidental, logical, or real. So these are the, uh, I mean, what types of supposition is discussed for the men. So total of 10 items only. And I will sh just share a short video to you regarding about this week for topic. And also, it is somehow related to our week three topic. ...and propositions before we delve into the discussion on the eight rules of syllogisms. In what follows, I will discuss the nature of terms and propositions. First of all, logicians define a term as an idea expressed in words, either spoken or written. 
And of course, an idea is understood as the mental representation of something. Hence, when one says, for example, a table, then we have a term, that is, table. Now, there are four classifications of terms in terms of quantity, namely singular, collective, particular, and universal. A singular term is one that stands for only one definite object. Some examples are table, Peter, or tree. A collective term is one that is applicable to each and every member of a class taken as a whole, but not to an individual taken singly. Some examples are orchestra, platoon, choir. A particular term is one that refers to an indefinite number of individuals or groups. Some signifiers of a particular term are some, a number of, several, almost all, a few of, practically all, at least one, not all, and the like. Hence, if a term is signified by at least one of these signifiers, then we conclude that that term is a particular one. Examples. Some Asians, almost all students, several politicians. Now, a universal term is one that is applicable to each and every member of a class. Some of the signifiers of a universal term are no, all, each, every, and the like. Examples. All Asians. Every politician. No student. A proposition, on the other hand, is a judgment expressed in words, either spoken or written. When we say a judgment, it refers to the mental act of affirming or denying something. Examples. President Trump is a good president. President Trump is not a good president. The first example is an act of affirmation because the copula or linking verb is does not contain a negation sign not. The second example, however, is an act of negation because the copula or linking verb is contains a negation sign not. Now let's proceed to the kinds of propositions used in logic. There are two types of propositions used in logic, namely categorical and hypothetical propositions. On the one hand, a categorical proposition is one that expresses an unconditional judgment. For example, we may say the Japanese people are hard working. According to logicians, this proposition is a categorical one because it does not pose any condition. On the other hand, a hypothetical proposition is one that expresses a conditional judgment. For example, we may say, if it rains today, then the road is wet. Now, please note that in categorical logic, we always use categorical propositions. Another topic that we need to discuss about terms and propositions are the elements of a categorical proposition. And so, a categorical proposition has three elements, namely subject, S, copula, C, and predicate, P. Here's an example. Some politicians are corrupt. Politicians is the subject S. R is the copula C. And corrupt is the predicate P. At this point, 
So I just show you um, some added information regarding about our lesson from week three. So term and preposition. So you may be able to understand our week four lesson, the supposition. So again, proposition is like a judgment. So it was discussed that a proposition is an idea or own opinion or a judgment of a particular person. So supposition is the property of terms acquired from their use in the proposition. So that is added uh, information regarding about supposition. So once again, uh, this is your activity for week four, activity one only, total of 10 items. So um, I will require you to submit this. So for this week four, we had defined supposition and we also differentiate material supposition from formal supposition. So for this week, uh, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. You may personally reach me through Facebook Messenger, or you may also directly ask me at school. And then for this week, I would like to say thank you to everyone and also um, share a Bible verse from the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. So nothing is impossible for God. So if we believe and if we have faith, nothing is surely impossible. So for this one, we have here, this is my, so said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes from the book of Mark chapter 9, verse 23. So I would like to say thank you, everyone. And again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask me. You may personally message me through Facebook Messenger or in the group chat as well, or also, you may message me in the Google Classroom that uh, I have sent to you the link already in the GC. Yeah, or if you're going to submit your requirements, you may personally ask me at school as well. So thank you once again, everyone, and God bless.